r slash no sleep posted by you slash g coos i'm a fire ranger in canada this is my stories hello i am a fire park ranger in alberta canada this will be a series of events that happened to me over the past five years of service this isn't normal for me to write my feelings online but someone close to me said that i should try i already have a lot of trouble explaining what happened so please bear with me I've been a fan of no sleep for the past five years. Basically since the first night shift I took here in the watchtower. My job is simple, I either sit in the weather tower or the watchtower. Either way, I spend my day watching one of the most beautiful views one can see. Mountains, lakes and miles and miles of forest. During the night, it's like being in space, I can't see anything except the stars and the moon shining through the tower. My tasks are to respond to problems nearby the tower, day or night and watch for any signs of smoke. I am trained to respond to service call or wolf call, deploy and investigate alone. I prefer working nights if you ask me. Something with the way things are during the night, makes me want to just sit down and relax. That's when I started reading stories on no sleep. At first it made me a little uneasy with where I was, since I work alone in a tower that moves a little every time the wind blows. Every time the tower shakes, it feels like someone is climbing up the ladder. I lost count of the nights that I sat right next to the entrance door paranoid. After a while I got used to the ambience and I got really comfortable with my work, maybe a little too much. This blog will tell you stories in a series of posts of my most awkward and weird events that happened to me in the past 5 years. So ladies and gentlemen, sit tight, hold on to your beer or coffee and be prepared to be entertained in the most terrifying way possible. A bit too much? March 17, 2015, 10.45 PM my shift starts usually at 10 h 30 but that night I was a little late. I had already called in to tell them I'd be a couple of minutes late so I wasn't really rushing to get there. To get to my tower, I have to drive a good 20 minutes in a dense forest at maybe 20 km per hour. Then I'd find a parking and walk 10 minutes in a little path that would bring me to the tower. Not scary at all if you are a trained ranger. As I was walking down the path, I didn't use my flashlight since the full moon was at its full peak. I could see very well and I decided to put on my earphones and listen to some rush. The path brought me the a cliff full of wet and small oak trees. When you walking up the cliff, you can see the weather tower at the top of it. So I didn't have much to walk left to get to my position. As I was scrolling down my iTunes lists, I had this weird feeling in my head. You know the feeling that you were being watched? I actually thought there was something since my area was full of mountain lions and other cute but dangerous creatures. So I decide to pick up the pace and try to get there without getting hunted down by some big cat. Now at a certain point, when you are approaching the tower's territory, some light sticks start sliding up to show you the right path to the right tower. I was going to the weather tower so I followed the right path. The lights are activated with a motion detector, so when I passed one, two couple of lights ahead will light up. That's when I saw something weird, a couple meters down the path, not an even 30 feet from the gate, the light were turning on and off as if someone was ahead of me. I stopped and took off my earplugs and I yelled. Yo! Who's there? Nothing. The lights turned off. I shrugged it off thinking it was maybe a small animal or something. I walked maybe 5 or 6 meters and the lights at the gate turned on again. Standing in front of the gate, a man. At least from where I was looking, it looked like a guy. I couldn't tell if it was one of the guys from the tower, but there was a guy, standing in front of the gate. I stopped again. Annoyed and confused I yelled loudly. Hey man, this is private property, do you work here? Lights turned off again. Now I was getting spooked a little. I decided to pick up my radio and call in my station. But the radio, obviously was dead. As I was about to start walking again, the lights turned on again and the man, was walking up the stairs leading to the entrance of the weather tower. I started running like crazy to try and caught up with him. At that point, I was dead set on talking to the guy. I got to the tower finale. Assuming the guy was inside with my co-workers. Since there is like 5 minutes between him getting inside and me getting at the bottom of the stairs. I vowed I saw him climb down in between for sure. I was about to open the door to enter the tower and I looked behind me because of the same feeling I had earlier. Convincing myself I was reading too much of no sleep at night, I entered. Hey man, sorry I'm late, where the guy? My co-workers looked at me confused. What guy? I've been alone since you left this morning. So I'm either going crazy, or I actually saw someone and he magically went down the staircase without me noticing it. Either way, that night I was not on a weather watch. Hello. 
I am a fire ranger in Alberta, Canada and this is part 2 or my real life events that had happened to me. First, I want to take a few lines to thank you all for the positive responses on my last post, part I. I'm glad everybody is enjoying my own traumatizing experiences to entertain yourselves. I have noticed some may think my last post looked like an old SAR post from a couple of years back. I went and read the thing and I can relate a little to him yes. Either way, we both had similar experiences, but that does not mean they are the same. In fact, they are not the same at all. I am not writing this seeking fame and popularity, I'm doing this to help others understand that there's more to this world than we think. I'm sure a lot of readers here are believers, but I'm almost positive that some of you don't believe in those phenomenon. The perception of our reality can be tricky sometimes. You see things you don't want to admit is true. What is truth, may not be the reality we see, and what is reality may not be the truth. To the doubters out there, it is with respect that I ask you to open your third eye, enlarge your senses and feel what is truly out there. I used to be close-minded. When I first started reading No Sleep stories, I was actually entertained a lot. Yes, it messed with my head more times than I can count but who wouldn't get paranoid in a one-man position in the middle of nowhere? To add to the paranoia, no actual outside communication beside the Northern Tower. I tend to believe sometimes that I got this job because I was not open to any paranormal waves and I would not let nothing hang my own perspective on that matter. Until that night, three years ago, everything's changed. So, lady and gents, I will now ask you to sit tight, grab a bottle of the strongest shit you have around you and prepare to believe in my stories. As I am writing this from the top of the Eastern Tower, with a cup of tea and a green lantern coffee mug, I have found the perfect event for you to change your perspective on the paranormal and the unexplained. December 15, 2015, Eastern Tower, 6.10 PM. Eastern Tower to North Tower, please acknowledge my checkup call, over. That evening was one for the ages. Big snowstorm mixed with some violent wind. I tried to communicate with the Northern Tower since my shift started that morning. I eventually was able to pick up a small but brief okay from them at 10 AM. Normally, we have to call in every two hours to check if everything is going well in our respective area. The Northern Tower would always initiate the call by saying, Northern Tower to Eastern Tower, good morning. Everything is pretty boring up in here and we wish you a disastrous day, over. I would normally reply in fashion, but that day was not like any other day. Something felt off about the storm. Mostly because it came out of nowhere. My radar was showing a nice winter blue sky for the entire day. After their short answer, it seemed like the storm was picking up intensive daily which was the reason with my communication problem with the other tower. Mainly the reasons that nothing was working on that day too. Statics and communications, power bump, power shortage and the Wi-Fi was not working properly. Since I could not reach the tower and I had nothing to do for the next 4 hours, I decided to go in the back room to lay down for a while. I would eventually have to wake up before my replacement comes, so I've set an alarm for 6 HOO PM. Something about the peaceful sound of the wind made it easy to simply drift away and sleep. The alarm I have saved was turned off when I woke up. The sound of static was loud in the console, someone was trying to reach me by radio communication. East Tower, this is North Tower, can you repeat your last message? Over. I awkwardly got up, stumbled on my winter boots to finally reach the console. Something was off, I felt something weird inside. Almost as if someone just left the room. But why would they say this? What last message? I slept for nearly 3 hours and I never got up to pee, even more to go play radio with the tower up north. I didn't want it to sound too tired on the mic so I gave myself a couple of slap on my face to try and wake me up a little bit more. With the most obvious I just woke up voice, I replied. North Tower, this is East Tower, I didn't send any call for the past 4 hours, over. Nothing. Only static. Again, I was thanking damn nature for the pain in the ass day I was having. Eventually, I had no choice to start a malfunction report due to the lack of communication. I hated those reports, probably because I'm a little too much of a lazy person. Coffee in hand, I was sipping and writing my way through my report when the tower lost power. It was pitch black inside. My anxiety reached an all-time high when I could not find any working flashlights. Enraged by the temperature outside, I stumbled around the console trying to look for a potential light source. That's when it happened. A weird clicking sound right next to me, coming from inside the radio monitor. The light from the monitor started to open on and off until the radio completely turned on. The sound of static coming out of the thing started to amplify more and more. 
until I succeeded and unplugged the monitor. No power and the radio was working? What the hell? My heart was still racing after 10 minutes of me, trying to figure out why, with no power, can a radio turn on? I sat on the main chair and closed my eyes for a moment. I was feeling myself relaxing, the wind blowing on the tour, the snow colliding on the windows. Everything of this place was made to make a man fall asleep. East Tower, help is on the way. Please stay still, over. I jumped the fuck out off the chair. Chills were going down my spine. No freaking power nor a connection to a power source. I reached down for the microphone, sweating due to extreme nope situation I was having. Realizing mid through that the voice was not the same as I remember, it was already too late, I replied briefly. Who's this? I've waited a couple of minutes for an answer. I was getting angry at that point, I grabbed the microphone and I yelled. Who the fuck is this? What's going on? What's? The communication was cut short. The power was restored miraculously. I plugged in the monitor and started to make a distress call to the Northern Tower. I was freaked out all right. Uck, Northern Tower, this is Ut. Eastern Tower. Did you just called me five minutes ago? Over. And his answer, was to this day, the moment when my third eye opened widely, he said. Eastern Tower? Where the hell were you? I tried calling you for the past three days. And I replied. I'm fine, I tried to call you since my shift started 7 ho. What do you mean 3 days? You've been MIA for the past 3 days, SAR teams are all over the place. You've placed a distress signal from far up west. Reality can be tricky sometimes. When you work too much and are secluded in one place for a long period of time, you can lose your path a little. But to me, I never lost myself, I fell asleep 3 hours ago to wake 3 days later, naked, in a console looking outside the window. A beautiful blue summer sky. No clouds in the area. Only the beautiful sight of nature of the Canadian wilderness. Birds were singing that morning and I could see. Wait where's the snow? It's, it's December?